In Shadowrun 5th edition, the Matrix controls access to the various pieces of private data or sensitive locations. However, some would seek to undermine the security protocols in order to gain the keys to this access. If you are one of them, then you will need to understand the rules of placing marks in the Matrix. Marks are the very basic and fundamental keys used to access information in places in the Matrix. In order to do almost anything of substance in this electronic world, you'll need to be able to place marks. Here, we will discuss primarily the rules of placing marks, but if you'd like a more detailed discussion of the nature of marks, please see the video on what are marks in the Matrix. Placing a mark can be done legally or illegally. Legally placing a mark on a target is pretty straightforward and done by invitation only. The owner of a device, persona, host, or file may send an invitation to anyone they wish to freely place a mark. At the time of making this invitation, the owner sets the number of marks allowed, the lifespan of those marks, and the duration of the invitation. The invitation may be revoked at any time, and once invited, a person may place the allowed number of marks as a free action. The more common case for Shadowrunners, and therefore the arguably more interesting case, is the ways of illegally placing marks on a target. There are two ways to illegally place marks in the Matrix. The methods used by each of these two ways is quite different, but they both end with the same result of having marked the target. These two methods are called Brute Force and Hack on the Fly. Brute Force, as the name suggests, is the less subtle approach. The hacker throws damaging code and malicious hacks at the target in order to break down firewalls and destroy security measures. It's quick and noisy, but gets the job done. Hack on the Fly is the approach for the hacker trying to finesse the target. The firewalls are poked and prodded, searching for weaknesses to circumvent defenses. This way is more subtle, but can be riskier if not careful. Brute force is an attack action, which means that the limit for the test relies on the attack attribute of the device being used to hack. The test is cyber combat plus logic versus the target's willpower plus firewall. Hack on the fly, however, is a sleaze action. The test is hacking plus logic versus the target's intuition plus firewall. Hack on the fly uses the sleaze attribute as the test's limit. Succeeding on either of these tests means that you have successfully placed a mark on the target. For every two net hits you get in the opposed test, something special happens. For brute force, every two net hits means you can optionally deal one damage value of matrix damage to the target. The target resists this damage with the device rating plus firewall. If you were using hack on the fly, then every two net hits gets you a free piece of information about the target, as if they had gotten a hit on a matrix perception test. Failing the test is also interesting. Aside from the obvious conclusion of not getting the mark you were attempting to place, secondary effects occur. Failing brute force means that the target's defense algorithms shoot malicious feedback code your way, causing one box of unresistible matrix damage per net hit. However, this feedback is automated and the target is not made aware of your attacks. Failing on the hack on the fly, however, causes the target to automatically get a mark on you and is immediately made aware of the hacking attempt. It is worth taking a moment to clarify when the target is actually alerted to the hacker's illegal hacking attempts and when they are not. Succeeding a brute force attempt will alert the target as well as cause potential damage, while failure will not alert the target. A successful hack on the fly attempt will not alert the target as information is gathered, but failure will immediately alert the target. A hacker can attempt to place multiple marks on a target with one complex action. This, as one would expect, is more difficult. Using a brute force or hack on the fly action to place two marks at once imposes a minus four dice pull penalty, and three marks at once causes a minus 10 dice pull penalty. Your marks do not last forever. If a device is rebooted, then any marks placed on it are lost. Additionally, whenever a reboot occurs on the device housing your persona, any marks you placed will be erased. Also, if the grid overwatch division converges on a hacker, then they also erase any marks that the hacker placed in the process. Thanks for watching. Tell me what things you'd like me to do videos on in the future. And if you liked this video, please feel free to click the like button and subscribe so you can get more videos like this one. 
Also, consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash complex action. Our patrons help to support the videos made here and in return get access to thank you rewards. And thanks again for watching.